know, Tre and Trez is a great player, and I still want to be able to, you know, tell them things that can help us, you know, repeat. Um, you know, those two guys, listen, they want to win. You know, Dennis, you know, all those guys are able to, to learn and able to adapt to our system quickly. And, uh, you know, they listen. You know, obviously when you have a team that's just, you know, coming off a championship, it's easier to – to do, <clears throat> no, it's easier to learn. Um, it's easy for those guys to adapt to us, knowing that you know we know what it takes to win. Hey, the, um, Paul George told Matt Barnes and uh, Steve Jackson on their podcast that uh, there's this uh, that, that you guys had some dialogue about trying to get you to play in Indiana. Um, it didn't happen. And meanwhile, Friday has been part of the two-year anniversary that LeBron, um, you know, made it known that, that he'd like to play with you. Um, have you thought about how those things have played out? And obviously, in the context, you're going to be facing Paul George at opening night. Um, no, I mean, the Paul, Paul thing in Indiana, uh, it was a conversation for sure. Um, kind of just faded away. You know, I'm not sure what happened on their end. He said that management didn't want to do it, whatever. Um, but it was, it was a conversation. Um, and then, you know, what Bron saying, what he's saying, obviously wants to, um, you know, team up. And and then, you know, the year that we do, we win the championship. So um, I think uh, Bron kind of spoke it into existence, and you know, it happened. And uh, I'm glad it happened. Um, you know, for, for, for me, uh, you know, selfish reasons, you know, I want to be a champion and able to, to do that my first year um, teaming up with him. Uh, but, I mean, who would have known? Who, who knows what would have happened with, with Paul in um, Indiana? You know, he's another great player, you know, especially when he was in Indiana. He was, you know, he was definitely tough to guard. He's still tough to guard today. Uh, but I think that was so long ago that, you know, we played each other many times, you know, since then. Um, but you always think about like what could have happened, you know, would my career be a lot different than it is now? Yeah. Um, I'm curious, uh, how much have you thought about kind of and for rest and stuff this season? And kind of like whether it's back bags and stuff like that, obviously with the off season being as short as it was and season being rest. How much have you thought about that and, and what do you think kind of plan is? Um, I think you just take it a game at a time, just kind of see what your body tells you. Um, I, said, I thought I was going to be, you know, winded in that first my first game back against Phoenix. Um, and obviously I'm not, you know, in midseason shape. I don't think anyone is. But I felt way better than I thought. Um, you know, I, I didn't expect to play the entire first. And I could have in the first game back. Uh, and so I'm – you know, I, I feel confident in playing, um, but, you know, it, it's different when, you know, you get constantly playing, you know, every night or back to backs and things like that. So, you know, you just figure out um, game by game, listen to your body, and uh, coach understands. He, he, he does a great job of managing us, uh, make sure that we get our proper rest, knowing that we had a short and off season. And, uh, and I can always go and talk to him, you know, and, and uh, when my body is telling me something. AD, we're all in great shape on our <laughs> um, Secondly, you, you kind of talked about your expectations for Kyle to have a big year. Um, we just got word that uh, got an extension. Um, what can that do for a player, just kind of the comfort in that and, and knowing and not having that kind of that year hanging over uh, someone's head? Yeah, I mean, it's good for him. Uh, you don't have that, you know, contract anxiety for the whole year. You know, now that it's out the way, he can go out there and play. Um, and which which he was doing anyway, you know he was having a great you know preseason and he even played great for us uh, in a bubble um, and all last year. So um, you know he he's he's locked in. He's making he made a great jump. Um, excuse me on both ends of the floor. Uh, he wants to take those matchups. He wanted to guard Book in the preseason. He wants to guard Kawhi in the preseason. So uh, and Paul. So he he wants those matchups. He he's playing extremely well for us on the offensive end. Um, making big shots, uh, you know, shooting the ball extremely well, making the right play, the right passes. Um, so it's, it's good for him. You know, we're excited to have him here. 
you know, I know he's excited to be here. Um, and he's a champion, you know, you deserve it. And I'm glad um, that the Lakers were able to, you know, work something out with him to, to be able to allow him to just go out there and play and not worry about contracts for the rest of the season. All right, I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, Jordan Richard. What's up, bro? What's up, baby? You know, what's up? Um, can you just talk about, uh, you know, last game you got six threes and uh, just playing on the perimeter. You know, Frank ran the down screen for you to catch the three and shoot. And then um, taking a lot of side step threes. Can you just talk about, are we going to see more of AD on the perimeter this year and running, uh, you know, just some just some more isolation plays for you on the, on the perimeter? Um, you know, last year, Coach talked to me about, Getting my my three point uh, attempts up, uh, I think I was shooting, you know, maybe three a game last year in the bubble, uh, or might have been for the season, uh, and thirty eight percent in the bubble. And he, um, he said it, it helped us win, and he wanted me to get that average up to five uh, attempts a game. And so, uh, you know, just having the confidence, you know, working with, you know, Mike P on our uh, on my shooting um, day in and day out. Constantly just shooting the ball with confidence and just letting it fly. Uh, the, my, obviously, the team, you know, the players want me to shoot it. Uh, they have a lot of confidence in me. Um, and so I just got to be able to be confident enough to go out there and shoot the ball, you know, whether it's a pull-up three socks or whatever it is, and um, just try to get that attempt up to five, just knowing that it'll help the team. With LeBron and AD, um, the partnership obviously it drives so much of what you guys do, work habits-wise. What have you seen just – manifest in practices or maybe even in the preseason games, how that partnership has evolved now that they've won championships together? You know, it's, uh, I would say it's more of the same where we were at last year, you know. Um, they had a great partnership last year on and off the court. Um, there's a great vibe between the two of them that carries over to the rest of the group. And, you know, even though obviously we won a championship uh, together so that that always strengthens a bond like that, but it's it's very similar to where it was last year. Yeah. Um, who was everybody available today? Who, who was in? Who was out? Practice plus? Yes, everybody was uh, full participants. Have Have you made any decisions about starting lineup set at this point? Yeah, we'll reveal the. We're going to hold the the starting lineup and reveal it on on Tuesday night before the game. Frank LeBron said um, on a recent podcast appearance that when he was watching that Clippers Denver series unfold, like he couldn't believe it. He thought the Clippers had it in the bag. I'm curious if you guys have the Clippers coming up on opening night. Um, what was your view being down there in the bubble and, and seeing that series as you prepared for either team uh, that you played in the Western Conference Finals? Well, I, I felt all along it was uh, two elite teams playing against each other. So even though Denver got down 3-1, uh, I didn't feel like they were out of it. And, um, you know, when they came back, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't surprised, and, uh, you know, not to say anything uh, about the, you know, the, the Clippers, uh, but I just know how good Denver was, you know, and I knew it was going to be really, really hard uh, to put that team away. And... Um, you know, I would not have been surprised if if the if the Clippers did, uh, because they were they were every bit as good. But you know, it's just two great teams slugging it out. Jordan Richard. Hey, Frank. Jordan, how you doing? Sorry, I cut you off, Jordan. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Frank. Good seeing you, man. Good to see you too. Um, can you talk about Marcus uh passing ability and just how it helps this offense? There's a lot of times I, I've watched in the film session just, um, you know, Mark will catch it at the top of the three-point circle or as a trail big, and you'll run like a down screen for AD or they'll have like a backdoor cut from Dennis Schroeder. And then just a, a play that just comes to mind with me is two games ago, you told Taylor to, to set a down screen for Marquise, and then you got a layup. Can you just talk about his passing ability and what it brings and how it opens up the offense for this team? Yeah, it's it's really remarkable uh, that the, the skill set that Mark has at his size and um, you know the intelligence, uh, the ability to read defense and whatnot. Um, you know, we had him bringing the ball up uh, and handling the ball much like Bam Adebayo and and uh, and Joker 
did it to us in the playoffs last year, and there's a lot of different things you can do out of that as well. So there's a uh, there's